<laughs> Good. I have another meeting at seven and I'm going to need to get some things done before it. Yeah, we should be out of here by 6.30 or maybe. Okay. So I'm not making any promises, but we're going <laughs> to be efficient here. Okay. Shall I start? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon. The appointed hour of five o'clock PM has been reached and I welcome everybody to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter, chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18 and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person audience attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which provided on the town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the design review board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, would you please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record? Lindsay Schnarr. Yes. Okay, Janet Marquardt. Yes. Erica Zikos. Yes. I'm Catherine Porter and, I, and Tom Long, uh, the other member is not here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and st staff liaison to the design review board and Chris Brestrup, town planner. The uh, Design Review Board, DRB, and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting on October 8, 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center. The design review board overlay district and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board recommendations, staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant, board, applicable land use board, and building commissioner. Tonight's agenda will begin and um, we will see if there are any, uh, I think we're going to start with announcements. I'm looking at the agenda here. Are there any announcements? Uh, is there any new business not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? If not, then we're going to go to applications. DRB FY 2021-09, Town of Amherst, to review the proposed design alternatives for the Pomeroy Village intersection project located at the intersection of West Street Route 116 and Pomeroy, West Pomeroy Streets. So who's going to present that to us? Is that going to be Chris? 
I yes. will present it. Yes. Okay. Maureen's going to help me by showing the slides. Yep. Okay. Um, one second. Let me pull that up. So that was, here we go. And this is a new slideshow that's, or this is the slideshow that's abridged from the January 25th meeting. That's correct. Okay. I send it to you this afternoon. Okay. okay. So right, do you good. want to start on the first slide? The title slide? Oh, sure. Yep. Okay. So good evening. My name is Chris Brestrup and I'm the planning director for the town of Amherst. We're seeking input from the public and from boards and committees about the Pomeroy Village Center intersection project. At this time, we don't really have a design to show you, but we're going to be talking to you about concepts. And for the design review board, since this is a town project, we'll be coming back to you once the design has been um, more, uh, once the design has been chosen. And um, so you can comment on the details. But at this time, we're kind of at the 10,000 foot um, view. So may I have the next slide, please? As you know, this is a meeting of the Design Review Board, and we've been um, traveling around, listening to, uh, traveling around via Zoom, listening to input from the public, as well as from boards and committees. I think we're going to be meeting with the DAAC next week, and we did receive comments from the Planning Board, um, I think it was at their, one of the more recent meetings. So anyway, we're, we're really, um, you know, trying to get to as many groups as we can. Um, as I said, I'm Chris Brestrup, and I'm going to be listening to what you're saying, and Maureen and I will be taking notes. May I have the next slide, please? Um, I'm going to be talking to you about why this project is coming up now, and then provide a brief background on this intersection project, and then ask for your ideas, questions, concerns, and comments. We're not going to get down to the level of um, you know, how wide is the sidewalk and how many trees are going to be planted or anything like that. As I said, this is like a 10,000 foot um, view. Next slide, please. So Pomeroy Village Center lies in South Amherst at the intersection of Pomeroy Lane, West Pomeroy Lane, and Route 116, which is also known as West Street. It has a mix of single family home neighborhoods, apartments and condominiums, businesses, offices and schools. It's a high traffic intersection, especially during rush hours. Next slide, please. Um, so what types of challenges does this intersection have? Well, it has a lack of pedestrian um, access. It's definitely a car centered design. It lacks proper sidewalks. The sidewalks that are there are narrow and very bumpy and not well maintained. It lacks curb ramps for people to get down from the sidewalk into a, a place where they can cross the street. It lacks crosswalks. It doesn't have any bike lanes. And the existing traffic signals don't have pedestrian operated signals for crossing. There's also a problem with cars backing up or queuing in the afternoon as people come southbound to pick up their children at the preschools and as people leave Amherst to drive home to South Hadley and Granby and Point South. Next slide, please. The town of Amherst applied for and received $1.5 million from the, straight, from the state in a MassWorks grant um, to make improvements to this intersection. The improvements will focus on traffic safety and efficiency, pedestrian and bicycle safety, and will provide well-designed bus stops for transit riders. The project is a collaboration between the Department of Public Works and the Planning Department with review and approval by the town council, which has jurisdiction over the public ways. Next slide, please. So the project has a long history. It began back in the 1990s when the state wanted to widen the roads and improve the intersection, but they wanted to do it in a way that the residents of Amherst didn't think was appropriate. So the town asked to take over the road and the town now owns the Route 116 from the intersection of Route 9 and uh, College Street with South, South Pleasant up in the center of town, all the way down to Country Corners Road. Um, so the town uh, now has control of that stretch of road. 
In the early 2000s, um, the town installed traffic signals there. Prior to that, it had been a four-way stop with stop signs. Um, and these were meant as placeholders. They weren't really meant as a permanent solution. Um, and um, there was a recognition that uh, a new design would have to be made of the intersection. So um, the, the planning department with the assistance of the, well, actually I should say the DPW and the planning department with the assistance of the design review board developed a design for the intersection with lots of public input, including meetings and surveys but there wasn't any money to build the improvements. The design review board was very involved at that time. Um, they held multiple public meetings. Um, we issued a survey and it was really, um, you know, an, a, a great uh, effort on the part of design review to, um, to work on this design. But we applied for a MassWorks grant to build that design in 2013 and we weren't successful in uh, getting the money from MassWorks. So then this past year in 2020, we did apply again for the MassWorks grant, and this time we were successful. Next slide, please. So I'm here to inform you about the project and to seek input from you to help the council decide what type of intersection to develop. The town council needs to make a decision by June as to whether to develop an enhanced signalized intersection or to develop a roundabout. And I'd like to tell you a little about those two types. So. Um, a signalized intersection is controlled or regulated by traffic signals or road signs. And this is the type of intersection that we're most familiar with. And you can see an image of what that looks like um, in, this, in this picture here. Um, the roundabout is a circular intersection where drivers travel counterclockwise around a center island. There are usually no traffic signals or stop signs in a roundabout. Drivers yield as they approach the roundabout and then they enter the roundabout and exit at their desired street. This type of intersection is becoming more popular and more common here and elsewhere. Next slide, please. So the questions that we'd like you to focus on tonight, as I said, we're, we don't really have a design that is um, to the point where you can give detailed comments, but we'd like you to tell us um, whether you, how you use the intersection. Do you travel through it? Um, and if you do, do you walk, drive, bike ride or travel by transit. What improvements would you like to see in Pomeroy Village Center? What features are most important to you in the redesigned Pomeroy Village intersection? How can we make the area more welcoming? And how can we help to support businesses in, in the Village Center? Next slide, please. So what are the opportunities for public input? Town staff has been meeting with various groups, including town council, the TSO or Town Services and Outreach uh, Committee um, with dis the District 5 community where the project is located and we're contacting abutting property owners and meeting with business operators. We'll be contacting people who live in the area and there's also an interactive website www.engageamherst.org. The Town Council is holding committee meetings and they have hosted two open public meetings, one on Thursday, March 25th, and another on Saturday, March 27th, and they're soliciting written public comments. The TSO is meeting again on April 8th and April 22nd, and they're hoping to make a recommendation to the town council at their meeting on April 22nd. So we'd like to hear from you, the design review board, about your ideas and questions and concerns. And once the town has hired design engineers to design the project, this project will be coming back to the DRB for specific comments and recommendations on the design. So now we'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, are there some thoughts that people would like to uh, offer at this time? Uh, Erica, maybe you would, since you've been somewhat familiar with it. Sure. Um, yeah, I am a South Emerson <laughs> resident, and I do travel through this intersection quite a bit, um, usually on my way through <laughs> to pick up dinner at El Comolito, Civis, or Mission Cantina, um, all my favorite places. Um, but I do also travel through here um, by bike 
from time to time um, in the warm months and am really mindful that this intersection is um, very, very car oriented and, and not at all oriented to the pedestrian or the cyclist. And I think that uh, whatever we do, well, I am leaning towards a roundabout for a couple of reasons that I'll explain in a minute. Um, whatever we do, we really need to keep the pedestrian um, and the cyclist first in mind um, with things like wider sidewalks, better lighting, uh, protected and maybe even um, signaled crossings, not, uh, you know, pedestrian. Yeah. Um, initiated um, light or audio signal for crossings. Um, I am leaning towards thinking that a rotary is the better choice here um, for a couple of reasons. One is that traffic calming is baked into the design. You must slow down. It's going to be a single lane rotary. Um, and so you slow down on a, a approach and you must continue to be slow upon the exit of a rotary. And I think that uh, traffic calming is something I've heard, you know, I've been to two public meetings about this intersection already and I've heard that from multiple people. Um, and also a rotary is the more environmentally friendly solution. Um, people simply don't idle as much. Um, and so you're not admitting um, as much into the as pollution into the air. Um, and so I think that, you know, as a, as a town that's trying to be mindful of our carbon emissions, this is a better choice. Um, so definitely want to keep the pedestrian first, uh, pedestrian and the cyclist first in mind. I know that there are concerns um, about rotary safety, especially for um, visually impaired mm -hmm. pedestrians. Um, and I know that there also are design measures that can be taken um, to help that. And one of them is that uh, islands, um, small islands between the, the lanes so that there's a kind of a safe place that divides the distance of the crossing in half. Um, and I think that could be done with either a signal or a rotary um, but wanted to suggest that as well. Um, and then generally speaking, I think because this part of town is kind of emerged slowly over time that the architecture doesn't have a common voice um, and there's a lot of parking on the street instead of buildings on the street. And so that definition um, should be provided with landscaping, um, landscape buffers and street trees um, to help unify that stretch um, that is within the purview of this project. I have a few other things on my list, but I'll cede to somebody else talk for a minute. Okay. Um, Jan or Lindsay, either one of you have any thoughts on this? I, I do. I, I expressed them at some other meetings and I, I think Chris has heard, but it's been a while. Um, I have pretty extensive experience with roundabouts um, in the British Isles, fewer on the European continent, but they're also there. And I think as, as a driver of a vehicle, they're great. They do slow you down. I hate them as a pedestrian uh, or a cyclist. And um, I also think the intersection is too small for a proper roundabout. I think it's really hard if it's so small, like the one that's at um, Pleasant and what is that, Triangle Street. It's so tiny you. that you can't get in it and get out of it to know, to know whether somebody else is getting in or getting out of it. There just isn't time to see the, the, you know, the flow. I prefer the way that uh, the British do it on in small intersections. When you're coming in from an open road that's faster, like we have, and they have you know all these small highways, and then they go through a village and they keep going. The road narrows to just barely the two lanes for a few hundred feet, and then it opens into the multiple lanes that are necessary if there's a left turn or whatever. 
uh, and then it closes up again until it opens back into the main road and that slows people down but it also allows um, pedestrian crossings that are safer because you've already slowed way down there's signs that tell you you're entering our village please drive slowly this the you know it's marked down to 25 or 20 miles per hour and then there's clear crosswalks and bike lanes and then it opens back out and this to me works better than um than a roundabout which is really i, I think for cars and trucks i also would just have to say that um i i drive there it's true a lot but i also walk around it and i walk to and from it on pomeroy and pomeroy east is in terrible shape that street really needs repaving um it's even walking, let alone driving on it, there's there's places where there's on the bridge, uh, there's a bridge at one point, and uh, if it's icy, one whole side of the street is, is it's not cleared, and so it stays, the, the one that's in the shade stays iced over, and there's no sidewalk on the other side, and it's really, you have to walk right in front of, right in the lane with traffic in the winter along there, so I think Pomeroy <coughs> needs some treatment as well. I realize that this grant doesn't extend that far, but it's maybe something that will be collateral DPW, you know, project. So thank you. Let's see, Lindsay. Hi, um, I don't live right there, but I do drive that way a lot. And it, it does provide a lot of access um, <clears throat> through to, um, well, lots of places, but I, so I am very familiar with it. Um, I tend to think that while I appreciate the, some of the points that Erica made about kind of the conscientious nature of roundabouts, um, I think that I do have some concern about it for pedestrian use specifically. Um, so I don't, I guess that's, you know, a question of like how, what are some good examples of ways in which um, roundabouts have been introduced with high kind of like focus on pedestrian safety? Because <clears throat> so I think that area in particular is very active for pedestrians, both um, in terms of people that are just kind of dashing between parking lots. I know that Mission Cantina often gets overflowed um, in their parking. And so people park on the other side. People are crossing at night often. I know I have. Um, and there's not a lot of traffic, so I don't worry as much. But I do know that I even will admit to the fact that with some of the new roundabouts that have gone into town, that I don't know, there's just a tendency to kind of like move a little faster, partly because you're trying to get in line and, you know, get in queue, but also it's just, there's there's an expectation that there's not as much of a delay. Um, so I worry a little bit about that, like people just kind of like moving more quickly through that intersection, especially with the tendency for it to be a high kind of foot traffic or bike traffic area. Um, and I know there's, there's the Amherst Montessori School there. I don't know how much that really gets a lot of kid traffic, but um, there are just so many restaurants that are in that little area that it feels like a place where it could be a really lovely pedestrian intersection. Um, but I guess I just, I feel like the rotary is more about like moving people, through, moving cars through quickly versus like giving the focus to the slowed down pedestrian pace. <clears throat> That's just kind of a personal take though. <clears throat> the data is irrefutable that it's the rotaries are slower and safer for cars. And um, I've been, uh, my friend um, Tracy Zafian, Zafian, who's on the um, Transportation Advisory Committee um, has Forward me, forwarded me some links about pedestrian safety, and there are a lot of things that can be done. And I think, you know, regardless of which direction the town goes with this intersection, that they'll want to, you know, take those design methods <coughs> into consideration. Um, 
but it, a rotary does slow the car down. And so whether that ends up being safer for pedestrians because the car never fully stops is it's a, it's harder to gauge how to cross. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Ms. Ms. Porter, uh, if, yeah. if I may, I, I just want to um, point out to uh, clarify uh, just uh, one or two things. Um, so I've heard members talk about rotaries and then sometimes roundabouts. Right. They're actually two distinctly different designs, right. which is very common. Sometimes um, I, I interchange them, but they are very different. So a rotary is uh, typically a, a large is a lar is typically large with entry speeds of 40 miles per hour or higher. A roundabout is generally small. Uh, speeds are rarely more than 25 miles per hour. Um, and so a roundabout is uh, designed to slow down vehicular traffic. And a rotary you often see, along um, highways, particularly if you've been into uh, Boston, Sullivan Square would be a perfect example of a horrible, of a, of a very unsafe rotary, a classic rotary and yeah. you know, like mass DOT and DOTs across the country are trying to actually get away from uh, rotaries that are designed to r speed traffic, masses of traffic yeah. and roundabouts are about um, you know, they're intended to slow down vehicular traffic. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. Well, I just had a couple of thoughts. Um, I don't know, the roundabout, there's something sort of, I don't know, peaceful. To me, uh, I've gotten used to them. At first, I, I wasn't so, I uh, wasn't so happy about them. I do have that thing of, I have that same concern about pedestrians because I go through the triangle roundabout uh, quite a bit and see people trying to cross the street. They sort of jump from one curb to the island. And uh, that could be that once people get used to it and it's, and it's designed in such a way that it gives people th that feeling that they can make it through the roundabout or around the, or um, navigate the roundabout, that might not be uh, such a big thing. Uh, I think the, uh, the whatever we do will improve the aesthetics of that intersection. It's really not a very, it's not a good looking intersection. And I think that if we just had the traditional uh, new traffic lights with new curbing and landscaping, it would give it a much better look with, with uh, some thought to uh, the uh, aesthetics of that area. And probably I would hope we would get the same feeling from a roundabout. To me, when I get on the roundabout, I, I'm on a mission to get up, to get on and get off and go someplace. And I'm not sure if that's, if that's conducive for people to come down there and then go to Mission Cantina or the other Mexican restaurant or Montessori school um, uh, as maybe as easily as if they were doing, if they were going through an intersection, they might feel more apt to make a turn to do one of those things, whereas the roundabout, once you get in, it's like a gerbil in a wheel. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't vote definitely against it. I, I, I find myself sort of sitting on the, um, on the fence about it, but, um, I, and again, I don't know how, it's gonna be a, probably a relatively small area, but I, I think whatever we do, it will definitely improve the, improve the aesthetics of that intersection, which is getting to be more and more important. So I, I guess I agree with everything everybody said with a few uh, exceptions. So those are my thoughts. So Chris, are you wanting just people's input or uh, uh, at this point it's too early to make a recommendation of sort of a formal design review recommendation? What would be most helpful? For you. Well, we're really looking for people's input, but if the board okay. wants to make a recommendation, you're welcome to do that. But that's not really what we're seeking. We're mostly right. okay. seeking comments. Okay. Oh, also, yeah. I, I believe uh, Ms. Marquette has raised her hand. Oh, okay. I can't see it. Yeah. Jan? Yeah. Mark Hart, not Mark. Mark Hart, sorry. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that whether you do a roundabout 
or a signaled intersection, I think that the crosswalk should be way far back from um, where the, inter the roads intersect. Yes. It's much Agreed. safer. Never try and cross a roundabout. There should be a crosswalk long before it. And even if people have to walk over a little bit and then back, uh, it's much safer. And I think that's true of an intersection as well. They shouldn't be right where the corners of the street come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, I that. that would you know work for either one, but um, it allows people also as they're crossing that little bit further over, they they look at the businesses, they pay attention to what's around them, you know, and waiting at a signal. Sometimes you see things you wouldn't have if there weren't one, um, uh -huh. whether it's in driving or biking or whatever. Yeah. So that's an advantage too to making it feel like a little town right. center. Yeah. Any other thoughts from anybody? I have a comment I'd like to yes. make, like to share if it's okay. Um, so one of the things that came up a while ago, not about this particular intersection, but about another intersection, um, was that a signalized intersection where you have two roads coming at right angles to one another makes it easier to develop the land on the corners. Uh -huh. um, so you end up with four, you know, sort of rectangular shaped properties that you could conceivably develop. And this intersection, the one that we're talking about right now, even though, you know, it's got sort of haphazard development and the parking is towards the front of the buildings and the buildings are not what you would necessarily call a cohesive design. Um, I think there's going to be development there in the future. And I guess my question for you all is, uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about the issue of a roundabout versus a standard intersection um, with regard to potential development of the corner properties? That's something that's been um, sort of gnawing at me. Uh -huh. May I? Yeah, yeah, score it. yeah. So one of the things I've heard is that, um, like, with, I really appreciate your question, Chris. And I one of the things that I, I've heard is that um, traffic numbers here are likely to um, instigate a need for turning lanes, um, which may erode those corner conditions that you're referring to. Um, so I guess that's something we probably want to know more about as the design comes together. Um, and of course, we are thinking that Hickory Ridge will, that property will be developed someday down the road. So maybe we need turning lanes in all directions. I don't know. Um, but I do think it's an interesting idea. It's like if you could do something cohesive at the corners, you could begin to create some kind of a, an identity, an aesthetic identity. I just wanted to remind people about the possibility of turn lanes. Do you have any thoughts on that, Chris? Well, so when I first started talking about this with, um, with people back then, back when, um, and Jonathan Tucker was the planning director, he you know, talked about this building that is um, right across from 500 Courtyard and it is right on the street and it's, um, Right, it's just the one north of r and Liquor. It's a new building and I think it was designed by uh, Laura Fitch. Yeah. Um, anyway, here, up no, here. scroll that. down. Farther down. Yeah, it's oh, sure. the missing cantina. It's a building that's kind of, a, that one, yeah. So that's a mixed use building and that is up close to the street and it's got its parking behind it. And that was kind of the first, what should I say? line in the sand or something like that to make it, you know, here is where we're going to form a village center. And we want it to be like this. We want it to be buildings close to the road, you know, sidewalks in front of the buildings, parking behind. And I just feel like I question whether a roundabout is conducive to that type of development to making this more of a village center as each of these corner parcels is developed in the future. You know, we may not always have a gas station at that corner. We may yeah. not always have, um, you know, the Slobody building that's surrounded by parking on the Northwest corner. 
or the seven Pomeroy Lane that has parking right out in front. They may be designed in different ways. So I'm just feeling like that has to be brought into consideration when we're thinking about what kind of road configuration we want here. So anyway, that's just a thought. Chris, I think it, it, it actually argues again against the roundabout. I think you're absolutely right. Um, it, it just doesn't feel as much of a mm, village gathering place with buildings that could be close and mm, interaction between them easily if you have the roundabout. And I would like to see that where there are a number of businesses or shops, uh, you know, close uh, together with parking, not just, you know, obstructing access to them. Um, and, and I think that would go nicely with sidewalk setback signals that allow people to linger a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with Jan and Chris on this. If you, as I, I've pondered this for a while because I know the planning board's been talking about it. And I really think for a center that the opportunity to have the intersection uh, is better uh, for creating a feeling of uh, sort of a, a grounding of a, of a center, of a Pomeroy Village center there. Whereas the roundabout, once you get on it, you're just, you, um, you're missing the corners uh, or if you do, it could be more awkward, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna weigh in on the inter uh, an improved intersection, which could be very lovely and give a feeling of a community or a village center uh, that people can um, manage uh, in, in so many ways, bikes and walkways, so. Chris, is there a parallel effort by the town to encourage new businesses to go in or anything like say a coffee house or anything? Are we looking at getting more in here at the same time or is that completely separate? Um, it sort of grows by itself. It's sort of organic, um, and we don't have a we don't have a, an economic development director right now, so we're not. Um, you know, the the town is not out seeking businesses to go here. I would say perhaps the chamber of commerce is, and um, but the town as a body is not seeking particular businesses, but I'm hoping that eventually we do get an economic development director and that he would, uh, he or she would do that. Okay. I wonder if it might be possible as part of the ongoing decision-making and research portion of this to collect some precedents of both cases at similar scales in other locations, what, you know, around the country even where, you know, it might be that, because I, I tend to lean toward the, the same conclusion that the roundabout may not be as uh, conducive to the type of community that may be envisioned for this location. But I also don't know that's, that's based on perhaps not knowing of examples that exist in which it, which it has been conducive. So um, it might be, it might be true that if I were to see some examples of models for this type of design that my feelings would change. So I'd be curious to see what, what's out there in terms of examples at this scale um, that are images of, of intersections that um, do achieve the overall goals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other thoughts from the group? So Chris, are you okay with the, uh, it seems like uh, you are more in favor of the roundabout. Is that, is that correct? That's the impression I'm getting. So, Eric is more in favor so of Chris, the, what would you like? You want just, I think this is good. This is she's in favor of the roundabout. Lots of different, okay, um, all right. Lots of different ideas. And I think this is probably what we're looking at at this time. Um, I mean, if you wanted to take a vote, you could, but I, I'm not looking for a vote, so. I suggest we not take a vote at this point if you're coming back with one or the other, uh, unless mm -hmm. others, you know, I don't know that personally that we need a vote. Is that anybody want to have a vote or can we just uh, 
let Chris take our suggestions and uh, take them on to the uh, next group. And do more research. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thank you, Chris. Sure. Very helpful. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> so, okay. our next, uh, do you want me to pull up the agenda? Yes, yes, right. It's the uh, redo yeah. of the restaurant. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so, let me make. That would be. Uh, Federico. Okay. okay, let me uh, make Sorry. Federico a panelist. So bear with me for a minute. Okay. <coughs> um, Federico. Okay. Okay. Hi, Fe Federico. How are you? Hi. How are you? Um. So welcome. Um, do you need um, help sharing your screen, or or um, I'm happy to share the screen with you for yeah, you. If you don't mind, I yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, and uh, just give me one second. Let me open it. Um, hmm. Oh, I guess we made. Okay, hold on. One no, second. I have a I have a button here. I can share it. Oh, okay. Because that way, if uh, we have questions, I can show you uh, different things. Here. Yeah, and so uh, this is your first time um, <clears throat> doing a um, coming before the design review board. So I'll just um, just explain. Um, so you'll give a presentation um, of, of what you're proposing and um, just walk the board members through that. And then the board will likely have questions and there'll be a back and forth. And um, if they have all the information they need, they'll make uh, recommendations. Sure. So my name is uh, Federico Mendiola and I am a restaurateur. I have other restaurants in Massachusetts and we have one in Connecticut. Um, the name of the restaurant is Frontera Grill of those restaurants that I have. And the one coming to Amherst, it, it will be called Garcia's. It will be um, like the Fronteras, but with some additions and subtractions because of the folks at Amherst, uh, the students, uh, maybe a little more salads with more protein. And my chef has, has been working on the menu to bring it to Amherst. So it's not gonna be um, the one at Frontera, but it will be something very similar with the same ingredients, same proteins. And um, the Project Garcia's, we are looking to just uh, remodel and get it ready, do a lot of uh, uh, cosmetic um, changes, bring in a lot of tile in there. Uh, the place is pretty big, so we have to bring a lot of tile in there. We have uh, two patios. And we're planning to bring um, furniture for the patios. That is um, kind of vending. It is coming from Mexico and it's going to be uh, metal chairs that have ceiling tiles in them and they'll be covered with this epoxy. And the sizes will be standard sizes of, of tables and chairs. The table will measure 35 by 35 by 35 with four chairs. And the same with, I think, uh, four tables are coming up that are six tops. So the same, the same specs. Um, they're probably gonna be uh, five feet by thirty, and the six chairs. And that is to give it some, um, some life to the patio, and hopefully change the previous days that that we had. Um, enamored um, with any businesses that came in before before we came and to give it a positive energy to the town. And it will be a casual dining restaurant just like the Frontera Grills. And if you haven't been to Frontera Grill, it is a casual dining uh, Mexican restaurant that has uh, the typical burritos, fajitas, tacos, enchiladas that are typical uh, restaurant. And we'll have margaritas, we'll have um, a beer tap, um, we'll have um, night specials with food only, not with any drinks, uh, because we gotta follow the, uh, the, the law of Massachusetts, you cannot have any 
happy hour, a special time price on, on drinks in Massachusetts. So we are trying to bring in a good concept uh, to Amherst and we are not gonna change anything on the outside. Um, we are redoing the paving um, because it has to be done. It's been pre-beat up over the years and there was a lot of cracks on, on, the, uh, on the parking lot that they will get fixed and the lighting will remain the same. We're not really touching anything outside. We're just trying to paint. And um, I'm gonna scroll down to show you the, the paint that I projected. And I have also other options if you feel that is maybe something that is too bright or different. This right here, okay. the painting will be yellow and the letters will be, um, the letters Garcia's that will be on the front, just like the, uh, like the picture shows. They will be on each side of the doors and the letters will be, um, they will be placed in the space on top of the doors on a six foot space. And the letters average probably nine, 10 inches each except for the eye um, to be um, organized in that six foot space on both sides. And they are LED lights. The, the, uh, the letters are red on the front and they're black on the side. And they will be timed when they come on and come off um, probably automatic with uh, time savings light. And um, that's pretty much what we're trying to do. And we're looking for any comments or questions that you might have for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and did you wanna, um, Federico, did, uh, did you wanna show them, um, you had some photos of the outdoor patio? Yeah, the patio. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Now this would not be uh, your. This is a bigger patio from another restaurant, but this is the idea that. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, so this okay. patio is probably uh, one and a half uh, the size of yeah. we yeah. have on the side of to, that faces the inside of the parking lot. But this is the idea. Also, the umbrellas will be probably something different provided um, by um, by us and put out there with uh, heavy footing that with that we will stand the wind and mm -hmm. we have done that in Chicopee. Uh, we did that last year during the pandemic when the, we were allowed to open, we put uh, tables that were six feet apart and we provided um, umbrellas that were uh, put on the ground with the 25 foot base um, made of steel that we purchased at a local store and we put two two sandbags of 25 pounds each on each one of them to secure them to the ground. So this probably will be the same and that way it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't hurt anybody besides the tables. We're looking to put um, um, nine to 10 tables. It's gonna be four and six, nine to 10 tables on both sides. So they will not be um, close to any tables when we put them in because we're not looking to put a lot of people on the patio. It's just going to be something that's going to accentuate the ethnicity of the restaurant from the outside when people are driving by or walking by or visiting the restaurant. Okay. Did you say you have a restaurant in Chicopee? Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Is a grill at the Rotary? of uh, Memorial oh. Drive on James Street. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a side entrance? Uh, 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 oh, at I the restaurant here? They do. Yeah, it's a uh, side uh, entrance and extra. Can people come in someplace in there? Um, excuse me, can you repeat the question? Yeah, do you have a side exit or entrance? On this, on this window side, I think oh, the, on old, the patios, the old patios have yeah. the door uh, that would serve us. Okay, a the, so the servers come out through the door. Okay, all right. Yeah, actually, could you uh, scroll to um, like the beginning of this? I think, um, and that's um, you provided the the site plan and uh, floor plan a, from I mean, um, used yeah. for Porta. 
And right. are you using the same um, layout as before? For Cora in, in our restaurant? Yeah, this was part of your application. This is what um, you had submitted with your application. So is there, if you scroll up one more, I wonder if it shows the outdoor dining. Whoop. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, so it, he, here it shows to the right, it shows that there's outdoor dining. Yeah. Can I, um, right. I, let's see here, that there's outdoor yeah. dining in the front. Uh, along East Pleasant Street, and then. So this is yep. what we were talking about, and there's the exit from mm -hmm. the restaurant, and then there is the patio, which is a little larger, and there there are two doors on this one because it's a little bit larger, and this goes towards the bathroom, so we'll make sure that when we direct people, folks uh, that come to visit the restaurant uh, for for the. General safety, we'll probably ask him to use this door to go towards the bathroom because he's not going to be the one that has the most traffic because this one will be the one where servers will be coming from the bar area and the kitchen to exit through the door. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, design review board members, uh, your comments or questions? Who would like to start? Anybody have some thoughts? Well, I, I just say one thing that um, not having the purple will be a great relief to, I think, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> most, most people in Amherst. <laughs> but, whether this remains your color, I don't know. But <laughs> uh. so, and your one other thought you, you have the same amount of parking space that uh, was originally uh, uh, associated with Bertucci's. Can you also park around uh, near the spoke or is your parking limited to your... The, no, the, actually the, uh, the, I believe the last time I checked the parking spots, there was 12 um, and 62 parking spots plus four handicapped spaces right in front of the restaurant by the door, by the front door. So it would yeah. be like if you try to cross the patio from, from the restaurant towards the spoke, those will be the first four spaces that are marked as handicapped. And when uh -huh. we get done with the paving, they will remain the same first four spots for accessibility. And the spots behind the spoke, those are um, common spaces between the spoke and, and ours. So I'm gonna try to have, um, my staff um, the best I can to have them park at those spots first. That way the customers and patrons that come, um, they are a little bit closer to the restaurants because most, most of the employees will be in there for several hours and people that come into the restaurant, they'll probably average maybe an hour and 20 minutes at the restaurant. <clears throat> okay. So questions, comments from anybody? Shall I just go down? Uh, Lindsay? Um, yeah, I mean, I think this all looks really good. So, um, you know, I think my only concern is, I think the color looks nice um, and I, I don't think it's too bright necessarily, at least in the first rendering, but um, color is funny in that, you know, it can, change depending on the lighting and um so you know i i think you're you're working with cunital on this Is yeah right? yeah, yeah. That's, um, so i'm sure they'll then are they managing the cut the exterior color mm, no this uh this render i had it done with the folks uh that i'm working with in mexico um Kirito offered to do it but this was already done if, if I may, and I understand about the color that might fade over time, I have some options that I would like to run by you and get your input. And because these are gonna be colors also that could be the ones that we could change the building's colors too. I was, um, I was prepared and I picked different colors to see what you would envision being as the best choice for the restaurant. 
and sure. uh, let's see if I can share up. I also know. I like this. This yellow is a little subdued, and I like that. If if you can, if it can be held true to that, and not turn out to be like, you know. Way. Yeah, the next slide of the patio, even you can see it already here, is much yellower. Yeah. That really is too bright. And yeah, this is almost a gold. That would, be, that would be the shade of the sun. So when the sun hits it, it's going to get its full potential. And when it has a little shade, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be seen as a little darker. But the code that you follow with uh, paints, uh, you go to the, if I can share here in a moment, you go to the <laughs> people and you pick a color that is the one that is gonna be on the building. Okay. And let me see how I can share. Um, uh, you uh, so uh, you you could stop the share and open the file that you want um, okay. to show. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I go. Do I go share screen or no? Yeah. Sure. I share screen. And so that will show everything that you have open on your computer yeah and how do i go to my desktop um well it is the um is the, like the file is it open is the like the file yeah, the oh, it's open. open with the files in it oh okay then um you need to change your view so that you don't see the whole screen for zoom at the top yeah, well, he might have, sometimes when you have multiple like PDFs open, um, it can kind of get a little wonky. Uh, would you want to email it to me if you're not able to? Yeah, let's see if I can change from here. I'm just gonna try to share the screen because in that folder I have um, like five, six different colors and I have a render with one potential favorite color that, that we chose um, that you can see the building that is uh, painted with it. Okay. Um, I'm very new at Zoom. Um, I, I don't have a lot of Zoom calls. I don't yeah. usually. Well, you're doing great especially for your first time, uh, so sorry. Um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. It'll probably just take a couple seconds, uh, probably take a few seconds for it to get to my email. We didn't get it on the original uh, application. And you know, I submitted it to Jennifer Mullins uh, with the original application, um, but uh, when I got the link, um, when she sent me the link a few days ago, it's not on there. It's not attached oh. to. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I'm gl I'm glad that you're bringing it up. Um, so sorry that didn't. Um, I wouldn't. It, it just happens. There are so many moving parts that it's hard to keep track of everything at, at the time. Sure. Uh, so did you send that to my email, which is uh, Pollock M? And it's going to be faster if I do it from my phone. <clears throat> Paula? What is your email again? Uh, Pollock, P-O-L-L-O-C-K, M as in Maureen. So it's Pollock M. Logged off, okay. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to reset. He just sent. Great. Yeah, if it was a consensus that you guys overall thought this this yellow will be too bright um, or too um, 
not good enough for the building. Uh, please feel free to tell me if uh, one of the other colors uh, is more appropriate. I have, um, I lean more towards the, the one color that's a little more on the dark orange side. Um, in every color that I submit, it has a name on top of the swatch that I chose from uh, the Home Depot. So that way you can see that that color is not gonna change. So if I was ever to paint the building, that would be the code that it will go by. So it's gonna be darker on one end and lighter on another side. Okay, so let me start over. Okay, okay, this is what I have. Okay, so. Okay, Here's with a gray, uh, with a sort of a gray trim. Is that right? Yeah, I'm yeah. Looking at the trim, I think we're just looking at the paint color. Okay. Which one here? Um, let me see. <laughs> let me look at the screen again. Is one of the, is that the question? Which one, which is one of these? Is it, yeah, is it one or the other? Oh, or is well, it, yeah. Um, I wasn't watching the screen because I was trying to mm. not get through the other screens. So is that lazy, laser lemon or some English daisy? The, the laser lemon is uh, to tone it down and make it a little dark so it's not as bright and light that will fade away too easy over time. Yeah. yeah. The laser lemon. Uh huh. And the name of the one that that I sent, um, if you can look for the pictures there. Is there another one? Oh, um, hold on a second. Oh. Is the one that is called English Daisy. Right. Oh, yep. Yeah, they're both up. Yeah, we got those. And was then there another was one? The... I think that was it. Oh, did we, I, I think we saw this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and if you look at the building, it has a render with that oh dear. right there. Yeah. This, don't mind the sign because that was very early. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. So that's not going to be the sign. Uh, would you, um, did we see a sign proposed for um, facing the road here? Not there, no. It's going to have only signs. Over the door on both sides. Mm -hmm. This. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 That right yeah. there. Okay. Then I have a green one, but I believe those will be brighter. I have two green ones that I sent in also. Yeah. Sure, we can go. I, yeah, I think maybe not the green. Yeah. So I have a question about um, the. You know, I think their color, as I said before, it's it's its own science, right? And so. Um, I, I don't know, there, there's a tendency to me to do um, at least a mock-up, if not have the architects oversee this, um, because um, there's a lot to take into consideration. I mean, I definitely lean toward the laser lemon in, in terms of the options that are provided for a number of reasons. Um, I think the green is too bright, and I think the orangey red, while in its own... Okay. Space could be fine, I think, in the context of against some of these other buildings that have this kind of um, reddish orange brick might be a, a question of, of how well those either match or contrast in a way that you may not anticipate. So I lean toward the gold, but I, but I also question if this laser lemon is going to read more like gold or read more like mustard colored. And I think um, again, in certain, in certain locations, a mustard can be fine, but it can also be really loud. And given that this building has already kind of become an eyesore in terms of its color, I, I just, I hope that, um, you know, you'll be able to land on a color that really works well here. And I, I do think that that kind of like gold, the, the more muted gold could look really nice the way it's shown in this rendering. But I agree that in some of the follow-up images, it starts to read a little too yellow, like a little too, um, like yellow mustardy. So, so I think it's a it's a question both of um, finding that right heat, finding that right color, um, but also perhaps having a designer's eye on it might not be a bad idea. Um, and doing certainly doing a mock-up, like a patch on the wall, 
uh, maybe even like a whole swath of a wall, given that, that it's against that blue and it's going to be really hard to tell um, mm -hmm. before getting the whole, you know, painting the whole building. And I think that's what the architects would, would oversee as well and, and advise is to do some kind of um, portioned mock-up to make sure that the color really reads the way that isn't it's intended. So, you know, I, I don't know what the reasoning is for not having them manage that part, but I think that they certainly would be a good candidate for ensuring that the color is, is handled appropriately. Um, and if they don't handle it, I think, I think it might be a question of um, finding, a, finding a way to make sure that the mock-up is, is done um, and, so, and certain kind of reviews are perhaps done as well to just check on it because like I said I think it it could be really lovely and it could be it could be a, a, a miss right so I agree with that and I've also learned over the years that the color that you pick on the swatch always is more uh, intense and brighter when it gets on the wall out in the light particularly outdoor um, so it may look fine in the store or you know just on the swatch itself, but it's gonna really intensify over a large wall. And our light in the Northeast is very different from the light in Mexico or in California where I grew up. And colors come across very differently here than they do in that light. So I agree that getting a sample tin of paint and even painting white behind it around it so that that blue is yes. offset and, and painting a considerable section of wall to see how it appears in the light here and with the surrounding buildings would be important. I would 100% agree with getting some paint and painting a wall. Uh, but <clears throat> so about, so Lindsay and Jan, let's suppose he does this, um, what would be the, uh, do we wanna see it? Do we wanna go down and take a look at it? or uh, how will we ever make the decision about the color if we don't personally go and take a look at it because we'll, well get another- Well, suggesting that he consult with Kroon Riddle and if they were involved, I'd feel perfectly yeah. comfortable. If, if okay. he doesn't want Kroon Riddle to be involved in this, then I mean, if he wants us, I don't know, but I think there should be more people viewing it with sort of a disinterested yeah. objective. Yeah, I think my recommendation is to have Kuhn Riddle um, be the, the, the agent that reviews it um, because they have a lot of experience in managing color on buildings and, and knowing both how to select a color but also how to review it properly. So that's my recommendation um, as kind of the, the most straightforward professional approach and, and also probably when I say straightforward, like you don't have to come back to us and um, figure out another pathway. I think it's the most obvious path. Yeah, it's a really big building and it's really exposed. There's gonna be a lot of that color with multiple sides visible at once from, uh, you know, from a distance. It's not like a small storefront that's sandwiched between other buildings and other storefronts. There's gonna be a lot of that color. So. It's really important to get it right. You can see what happens when you get it wrong from the previous previous people, yeah. you know. I do like the black put, trim. I, I, are you gonna put any potted Erica, plants or anything in that front that front patio that we're seeing here? It looks really arid. That Anyone? actually was my comment um, because I know that, I'm gonna try to do a quick draw on the screen. There is a, there's a big, um, Oh, sorry. I was trying to make it bigger. Here, I'll make it bigger. Hold on a second. Sorry. <laughs> We're frozen. Um, there's a big uh, square right now of um, plant a planter there now, and you said you were going to rework the paving. Um, but are you going to maintain that that square that is planted at the moment? And there's also, I think, plantings um, along the edges of the. Um, those half walls, those low walls that separate the patio areas. Mm -hmm. So that's my thought. I was thinking that um, maintaining those planting areas and providing some green and a way to break up all of that pavement um, 
would be a nice thing to um, to keep rather than to pave over. Yes, and will help tone down the walls. Yeah. So you're saying planters on the half wall there? I think that it currently, Mr. Mignola, I think that there already is um, a bit of um, like a a dirt in front of in front of this wall and let's in front of the see. other. Um, let me erase all my. Mark. Sorry, let, let's see if that pops up. I wish I had a photo. Um, I have a photo right now. I have I have plenty of pictures. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, we'll, Google, oh, Google Earth will show you. Well, if it's up to if it's up to date. Um, let's see here. Uh, give me a second. Oh, it would be up here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah start with the aerial view because I think it's on there. Oh, okay. Hold on. Whoop. Sorry. But ah, okay. Oh, sh so there's this oh. this planter right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. And then just on the edges of each of the patio walls, I believe that's a planted edge. See, like, it's like they capped it. Maybe it's maybe it's just grass, but and then that's a little bit of a dirt edge as well. Oh yeah, you could put more there. Yeah, yeah, better. But definitely to do something pretty lush in that center would really help. Yeah, the center definitely you are able to do something. The side on the half wall there, there is just a trim of grass looks like. Um, I have to consult with a landscaper to see what is something we could put there. Mm -hmm. The idea is not to block the view to the uh, to the patio, yeah, but really to enhance it. So mm -hmm. in the corners of both ends, I could probably put some really nice plants that are flourish um, up on top of there, but I really won't be looking to block the patio from the general view. No, but you could have low pots that are filled with colorful flowers, like you said, that would really enhance the entrance. Mm -hmm. That too, yeah. Hopefully they will last, they will last uh, being outside. Yep. With the weather and things. Yeah, well, you have to water them and- You might, yeah, also, you and might also consider, as some people I think suggested, widening that area in front of the half wall um, on the north side by simply re removing, I say simply because I, I'm not a landscape architect and I don't know what might be involved in that, but Presumably, you might be able to remove some of those what look what appear to be like two by two pavers um, along that north edge, and and perhaps you know um, still not block the passageway into the double doors. So so that's one potential option for giving a little more green space. But I I also don't know that you necessarily need it. I do agree with Erica that maybe utilizing that square that's existing would be a nice way to introduce a bit more life to the corner. Yeah, uh, we're not changing anything that's out, out there. Uh, any green space that's outside, we're gonna continue and fix it and do something nice with it. Okay, so it's not in your rendering in that, but you do intend to keep it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, cool. yeah. that's nice. And as far as the Q and Riddle, going back to answer that, um, they were not involved in the render because we needed something that that showed the design. Um, on the building, the render just happened to be there and what the company in Mexico, they just mounted digitally the signs on the building. So I had that done, but I can easily just ask them to give me two or three of the max renders of colors. But I just wanna bring up that no matter what Q Riddle will do, it will be the same expectation and the same result when I present it to you. So I'll present you something with a, with a certain shade and it's not gonna be down to perfection. The oh, I understand that. And I, and I don't expect it to be anything different necessarily. It's more about um, ensuring that there, are, that there are professional eyes on it, you know, that there's someone that can, can check to make sure that um, the color meets the expectation. Yeah, so the, the only real way to get it done and see what the color is gonna look like, I'll paint some lines, some white lines on the walls mm -hmm. and really see it live 
or mm -hmm. take some pictures on daylight and see how they contrast. But the renders are not gonna be done to what we are looking for. We can have them overlook it, which is not a problem, mm -hmm. but you know, we show up when the building is painted. Like I think someone mentioned that when you paint on some areas, it may look dark because of the shade. Sure. And like it's different up here. Yeah, and I think that the goal is to find a way to, um, the one I say having professional eyes on it, there's a there's a, an understanding from architects and, and interior designers of, of how color might look in a rendering versus um, when applied in the field. And so there will be that, um, that control of having the mock-up and having the designer's eye to say, okay, this mock-up does or does not agree with the rendering that was approved. And if it does not agree with it, then let's go back and see if we can find a color that does. And that, that's the process that they would be able to manage for you. Yeah. And that would help to make sure that the color doesn't become something it wasn't intended to be. Of course, I can just, uh, I, I'll ask him to, to help me on it. Um, they couldn't be on the meeting tonight because they have prior arrangements, but I'll ask them to um, to be part of the process. Hmm. I help me with the rendering so that way, even if we can't communicate by email and pass it to a group of people, you can see it faster than yeah. actually coming down to see it in person. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, um, I, I just wanted to mention that um, uh, Federico is submitting um, Article 14 application with to the building commissioner and the planning director uh, for as a result of um, COVID, um, the planning, the town of Amherst has tried to um, provide relief for retail and restaurants uh, that would normally require a special permit uh, review and approval. Um, and to instead go through an administrative approval uh, through the building commissioner, um, they would be providing um, the same um, sorts of uh, application submissions that would be required for a site plan review or special permit review um, and would need to meet all the relevant, you know, zoning bylaw requirements and whatnot. Um, but this would just speed, speed up the, the process, which takes, you know, Hmm. Uh, you know, at least three, four months. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. So, you know, f um, uh, in, in regards of the color, you know, the building commissioner would want to still see uh, what is the final color. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. And I think there's consensus in this group that everybody likes the, the golden yellow tone that we see on this exterior. Um, and I think the question is, how does it look in real life? Like, so we trust the render only so much and it would be, I think, wise to, um, to see it in person before you make a commitment to the whole building to do that sample swatch that um, Lindsay Schnarr was suggesting. Um, so yeah, I also, I also like this, this yellow. But I like it better where it's in the shade, that color with lots of gray in it. I would rather see that on the whole thing than where it get the, the light turns it very, very yellow. I prefer it more sort of mustardy or darker. We're talking yellow and we're talking gold. And it seems like what we're really looking for is gold as opposed to yellow. And so, yeah, yeah. I think we all agree that uh, we like the gray or darker perspective I would it be okay would it okay so uh, I know our time's getting a little tight here any other suggestions or thoughts uh, we've zoomed we've zoned in on the color I don't know whether it be fair to ask for a, a little bit more specific landscaping plan because right now uh, if we want something, I think it might be helpful to see exactly what the proposal would look like. But um, I don't know um, if I. Okay? I'm wondering if if the if the agreement is to keep what's there and plant it. If we need to see another plan, I would hate to hold up 
Yeah, well, yeah, I do too. On the other hand, you can, there's planting and there's planting. So unless somebody, you know, gets some help and putting something in that spot that has some significance and is sort of attractive and maybe last all, maybe all year round, what's there now looks pretty pathetic. So uh, definitely we see potential. So yeah, we just encourage it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can always put pots of flowers around, which would be very nice. Yeah, I can do that. If it, even if it was seasonal, summer plant things, which would add a nice pop. Okay, any other thoughts? Uh, are we ready then to make a recommendation? I just say overall, I think it looks really nice. And so, you know, it's exciting to think about this happening. And um, I think this rendering is a great, uh, goal for, you know, especially for the design overall, but especially um, the colors and with the caveat of having that existing planter um, provide that extra landscaping and, and hope, hope that that gets, like you said, maintained year round in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Eric, are you okay with it? Okay. Um, so if I if I may, let me just sort of yeah. recap. Let me just go through this right. one second. Sorry. Um, so everyone agreed that a mock-up of colors should be provided on the building wall itself, and that you know the the color should be selected, you know, by the owner, but in coordination with uh, Kuhn Riddle and that um, the selection and review of the colors of the building wall should be done in, in collaboration with Kuhn Riddle. Um, let's see here. You know, could there be an opera? I, I guess I have a question. Could there be an opportunity for board members to go take a peek at the sample of colors? Would board members be interested in something like that or not? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. okay. Um, let's see here. Maintain the planting area in, in the center um, of the pavement that we saw in the other screen um, from the Google map. And um, I know Jan had suggested having planters along, um, uh, I don't know if this shows, but along the um, patio. Um, I didn't know if that was, if the whole board was suggesting. No, just, the two, just the two walls that we were all talking about. And you know, Lindsay's idea to take out some of the pavers and plant directly into the ground, or you could set planters uh, on top of it. Just something else besides the square. Got it. Okay. If possible. Yeah, just on the on the front patio, not the side patio. So, right. Is that right, Jan? Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, it's up to them if they want to do more. Okay, and then I should say I don't know what it looks like these days, but Bertucci's used to main, maintain plantings all down the side. You can see that there's space for it on the, on the <laughs> south side. Yeah. Um, probably, probably. Right, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. But um, there's lots of opportunities for for plantings. Yeah. So. Okay, and I think that was, that was it. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, I'll move that we approve the yeah. application uh, based upon the notes that Maureen has taken as recommendations from us. Good. All right, it's been second. moved a second. Okay, Erica seconded. Um, all in, let me, let me do a roll call. Um, Erica, all in favor? Aye. Aye. L uh, Lindsay? Aye. Okay, Jan? Aye. Catherine, aye. Okay, so we, uh, four to zero, that we, this is our recommendation. Yeah. Um, okay, anything else that we, that we want to pass along at this time before we Get ready to adjourn the meeting. Oh, we so, do. when will you be opening? That how long or when? When? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I hope to have the restaurant ready between two and three months. Okay. We'll Very good. To get it done, I think Amherst uh, is a great area. It is a spot with positive energy. With people right. be very careful on how you serve people. Uh, not only not only students, but everybody else that comes in, and we are hoping to be that place because we do it on other restaurants that we are now established, and 
the students coming back, hopefully in the next few months, yes. hopefully everybody vaccinated. I got my vaccine <laughs> yesterday and I feel right. very positive that I, I can contaminate anyone if, if I get it. That's, that's great to, to have. And I think in a few months, all the students are gonna um, go back to, to being themselves and the town of Amherst will come back to be the town of Amherst. And we hope to contribute to the economy there and to the culture. We wanna bring a nice and happy restaurant people can come to. Great. <laughs> we need it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Excited. Let's go on this trip. I will have uh, yeah. uh, Kina Riddle, I have Brad help me on the project. I have him do me um, two renders with two different shades of yellow. And what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and paint six to eight feet by two or three. Yes, good. And then we'll let you know by email when it's done. And after he submits the renders, you can take a drive by and take a look at it and then take a unanimous vote and let us know which one would you rather see and we'll go for that one. Okay, right. very good. We'll okay. have an informal Thank meeting you. the first Thank night you, you open. All of us. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank very good. Luck. good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So Maureen, uh, do we have any uh, public comments? We do. Um, uh, Hilda Greenbaum. Okay, Hilda. Um, I thought you weren't gonna call me. I sent my comments to Chris and it was basically my experiences with the rotary at Triangle Street and the trucks trying to avoid it at all costs and go down the jug handle. That was one of my comments. And then the other thing was about um, signage because people who drive in this town don't understand the protocols for rotaries and I'm always getting cut off, namely the, the person in the rotary has the right of way and they can't cut them off. So, I mean, things like that, there needs to be signage if you're gonna go that route. But uh, I really worry about the trucks that wanna go north and south on 116, which is a, a highway north and south, that um, they won't be able to negotiate that circle. I don't think there's enough room there. And that, that runs into the same issue as trying to put a rotary or a roundabout in North Amherst up here. The trucks can't get around it. So I just wanted to make those couple of points and I sent them to Chris. All right, very good. Thank, Thank you, Hilda. Hilda. Thanks, Hilda. Anybody else, any other public comments? Um, let's see here, no. All right, okay. Any further you know what our next meeting is? We did um, approve. Oh, uh, you get stuff in. That's right. Yeah. So, um, uh, about we will be holding a, a meeting for a uh, for the mixed use building at located at 15 East Pleasant Street, uh, as well as looking at the temporary staging area and permanent use located at the adjacent lot where uh, the pub. Um, is currently located at, um, I'll be sending out a doodle poll and the submissions likely tomorrow. And, um, and um, those submissions will be found um, on the, once the meeting is scheduled, it'll be found on the town calendar for the DRB meeting posting, as well as located on the DRB webpage under um, board packets. <clears throat> okay. And probably when, and going forward, we're going to uh, get more specific about using the design review board principles and standards, which apparently are in the mail to uh, many of you. I don't know, Jan, if you have one of these, this gold copy, I did have you have? One. I've, I've got okay. it pulled up. I, I was ready to go through that. I mean, we can do like yeah. we do the circle commission and go through point by point if it would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I kept on um would do I, I kept on reading the standards while uh, we were while you were reviewing the uh, restaurant and I, I was thinking about 
suggesting that you guys go through that, yeah. but I, I think that you covered you covered them. Yeah, I think we covered it since this is not this is We're pretty much a building, so there was a lot that didn't apply on an mm -hmm. existing yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, with the new building, I think we'll have to. So uh, but okay. uh, just to point Are out though uh, uh, just to point out though, um, so standards that you did apply for the restaurant, for example. You know, we're related to, um, let's see here, landscaping, signs, uh, signs and uh, architectural and site details, such as colors mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it just, uh, I, I think. I think we did. It, yep. In relation to already, and spaces. Uh, yeah. As a building, it had already been re approved before, except for the color. So, I think we're okay on that. So, okay. Any other uh, business before we? Uh, I know we had some minutes in there, Maureen. We did, so, uh, which was from the last meeting, uh, <laughs> which was last month, which would have been March. <laughs> uh, I don't know if folks had got a chance to read that, read the draft. Well, actually, you did because they were based on the memos for the library, the North Amherst Library, and the Bang Center. Um, project for I sent your corrections. Do, do have we sent? Have you given us then the final version? I have. Okay. I have sent that. Well, that's fine. So um, okay. I don't know if you guys wanted to take a motion, make a motion for the minutes. I probably should find out what what meeting date that was. Let's see here. I think it was March eighth. Yeah, March eighth. Which me? Which of your emails were the minutes attached to? I'm having yeah, I don't remember seeing them. Um, so, uh, it would be in the email that I, I, I announced that I will be posting meeting materials on the calendar. And so there would have been a link to the town. Oh, to they were on that link. Of all uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Can you share, can you share the screen? So oh, sure. Yep. Yep. Um, give me a minute. We haven't done our homework. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, uh, of course we could do it next time if, if, um, yeah, we are running it. Time. Yeah, we need to go. Yeah, we'll do it next. Yeah, that that's okay. fine. Okay. All right. That, then by that time, everybody will have a chance to uh, uh, review them. On the, and you're I saying we adjourn this meeting. Okay. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You're getting good at that, Jan. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's one of my specialties. <laughs> ending meetings. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, we'll have a new re Mexican re restaurant and it will be gold or